good evening everybody welcome uh, for tuesday night um, public talk um, today's topic uh, i choose uh, uh, 12 interdependent origination or 12 dependent uh, origination or link uh, and uh, for uh, spiritual practitioner in the buddhist perspective uh, to understand the uh, theory of or the process of this um, is f very important. Why? Because it's important to know our existence and our self. Why we need to know? Because we need to know the over conditions, one thing. And uh, we, why we need to know over condition? Because we experience over conditions day to day life, we experience the over conditions. Condition is not always pleasant or fe good feeling. They have so many uh, unpleasant experience we can experience in day to day life. Even over in even over sleep, we can experience unpleasant feelings. And then, as a prayer, as a beginning, most important for us is to solve the. Mm, lasting peace and happiness, not for one individual or individual self, but, but for the benefit of all the session, sentient beings. And um, from th that point of view, then to understand evolution and dissolution, dissolution of our existence is very important. Otherwise, we have no idea about what is enlightenment, what is uh, an enlightened state. We have these two states. One is, we call this all, all sentient beings. It's a being, they are true. One is a sentient being which are not free from um, complete uh, suffering. One are free from all the suffering and their causes and their uh, conditions. Those beings are called enlightened or Buddha. And they are ones, they are also the ordinary person like us, who experience pain and pleasure, uh, and then find a solution. So the idea, there's uh, many reasons why it is important. One reason, to get enlightened, we need to know how do we get enlightened. And one thing, we didn't need to know how we get enlightened, we need to know the procedures. So procedure, there are two ways. One is to, um, know the path or method. That path and method is a union of these two important aspects. One is called method aspect, one is called wisdom aspect. So method aspect is a compassion, great compassion, unconditional great compassion is a method aspect. And then wisdom aspect is the uh, wisdom to understand the reality of our existence and reality of all the phenomena. So these are the two wings of the birds to fly from the unenlightened state to the enlightened states. We also we call this Tanja Paramita, which means Sharapki Parutu Chimba. Sharapki Parutu Chimba means a wisdom that trans transform or uh, us from this ordinary life to that enlightened state. So Sharap Kiparati Chima means um, go beyond. Go beyond means go from way, go from our ordinary uh, suffering existence or unpleasant state where we have so many confused, so many delusions, so many affliction, which are the cause of our experience an un unpleasant experience, or we can see suffering. For we all wish to get free from that ex un ex unpleasant experiences. For that, Buddha has laid out a path or method or process where we can free from ourselves. That is part is called, or I mean, that part has to deal with two things. One is wisdom, as I mentioned. One is the uh, method aspect. This wisdom aspect, method aspect, has a two quality or two function. 
One function is to purify our negative emotion, which means we have uh, to get rid of our mental sickness or mental habit of getting miserable all the time. We are just sometimes we are fluctuating and distracted with uh, some kind of temporary pleasure. If you have a, if you gain a, some kind of status or some kind of wealth, some kind of job or some kind of good component, com companion, then we get distracted and uh, we feel that we are released some kind of our suffering. But gradually it's come back and change and we get suffer again and again and again emotionally in our day to day life. For that, what we need to know, number one, we need to know the condition, why we have that condition. So that also shows that Buddhists, we deny or we mm, not accepting the creator, supreme creator, who has authority to create everything. Because we say there's a cause and condition for our existence, cause and condition for our experience, cause and condition for everything. So it is not just come out from blue, come out of blue. Some everything comes because of reason, including our emotion, including our existence. Yeah, generally it's a very common sense. It's you Buddhist says it's a very in inner science. Mangi you know, everybody can understand this in the gross form of our existence. We know that buildings are not met. It's not just somebody has just put a magic and it comes up. We walk for that, we design for that, we think for that, and then we create the condition and we create the cause, and then we build, including our ex ex external uh, things. Then internal love, our emotions, all our emotions, whether it is a happy emotion or good, bad emotion, or negative emotion or positive emotion, um, or we can say this virtue or non-virtue, whether it's a wholesome emotion or unwholesome emotion, but all has a reasons. Without any reason, they will never happen. Just, just uh, give, uh, giving an example like over hatred and anger. We never say, that I get angry, I don't know. We never say, we get angry because this and that. We give a reason. That clearly shows that all these Internal over experience and external experience are all has their cause and condition. That is the one way understand stand of how to understand the dependent origination. So dependent origination it is important in terms of understanding of in in the wisdom aspect. Wisdom aspect without knowing the interdependent origin or interdependent nature of phenomena, there's no way to realize the reality of things. So, so wisdom, to cultivate the wisdom is to put the antidote for uh, ignorance, which is the root for all our afflictive emotion, which produces the unpleasant things instantly or in long time. That if you observe, if you think yourself carefully in daily life, you can experience, you can feel in some accident. And then cellular level, we may confused, and even we don't know sometimes that we have unpleasant feeling inside, but we don't know what is the reason. But don't worry, they have reason. If you observe carefully, there is a reason. There is a cause and condition. One is that. And second, also, in the dependent, the Buddha the, the says, those who understand the interdependent nature of a phenomena knows the truth of existence and truth of phenomena. Those who know the truth of phenomena, they are free from suffering, means they are enlightened one. So you know, to enlighten, to get enlightened, we, sh uh, we have to understand the, uh, in the dependent nature or dependent origination, one point. Then second is uh, in the dependent nature also is a source of our uh, compassion and also cause of our compassion. Why? Because compassion never comes just, you know, thinking some uh, 
shape and form or some uh, sensation, you have to understand the nature of our existence. That's why Buddha says, first we have to understand the suffering. Why we have this pain? Not only, you know, it's, it's, it's a universal pain, universal pain, everybody. And 90%, only it's, it's 100% is made, of, made out of our individuals, made out of the, of self. Then due to that, uh, uh, I mean, the cause, then also it's affected the external, and then we can say natural disaster. In just conventional level, we say man-made desire, disaster, or pain, or suffering, and also natural disaster. But natural disaster like uh, those volcano, hurricane, all this, uh, if we investigate it and think carefully, this is also because of our disturbances in the nature itself. We disturb, we know that global warming is because of so many, I mean, the produce of the uh, carbon dioxide or all these uh, chemical things, you know? So it's uh, because th then we can apply this back. Why is affecting, if we produce this, and why not it's affecting only one, this all? Why it's affecting to everything? Because they are all dependent. So we understand, if we understand the dependent nature of our existence, then we have a less tendency to harm absent-mindedly or unconsciously. Because we have to take or think second steps or second thoughts to our action, because action produces our result. So that means also it's also source of compassion. Source of compassion, compassion is for what? including we have these two compassion called self-compassion and um, compassion for others. Compassion is born from realizing that oneself and others are in problem, in trouble. These troubles are boundless. You know, sometimes it's up, down, up, down, up, down. And this is just uh, repeatedly we can experience. You know, even physically they don't need any contact or physically. Like, you know, I give example of this mother's uh, suffering for the, the children. It is endless, you, especially you know that, right? Moment your child was conceived in your womb, until you close your eyes in death, you have a still, you have <coughs> unlimited consent or unlimited suffering for your children. Even children are good in shape, but you are worried about their future. So, of course, we know that at time of birth, and then you know taking care and the baby uh, uh, time, and then you know grow up a little bit, you know like until eleven years old, and then teenage, then go to colleges, and then they get job, even then settle down their life. Our parents still have, have no stop they worry. Still they worry about the future, about the relationship, about the job, or about the security. Even she are in a great trouble, but you know, like I'm just giving example, that is one part of our worry. Then of course, like socially, interaction of a job. You see, when we see this, and then I think like, you know, nature of our existence itself is very unpleasant. So Buddha is not trying to make us miserable, just you know, re reminding us the unpleasant uh, condition of our existence. Right now, in generally speaking, it's very like some sense of nonsense, you know. Many people who don't have a, um, I mean, a clear background idea about Buddhist concept, if you talk about all the suffering, 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 then it looks like you know we are trying to making you guys miserable, you know, reminding oh you suffer this, you suffer this, you suffer that. <laughs> Actually, we suffer like that. That is a reality, but the reality we don't accept. We never realize that it's the reality. That's why moment we because expectation is always in you know always 
pleasant, good things, but it pops up and uh, suffer, then our reaction is automatically, um, you know, very, I mean, the, what, what do you call this? Uh, of, uh, of course, this appointed, disappointed, it's disappointed, and if you quiet, that's okay. But what happened, we started uh, making problems either by either blaming or other we are trying to do something else instead of you know, just looking inside. So that's it. And then this is the two way why it is important for Buddhism. So this wisdom aspect to uh, cultivate the uh, wisdom to understand the reality of phenomena, we have to understand the dependent origination. In terms of our uh, compassion, because compassion born from realizing the suffering nature of other sentient being, emotional, whether it's emotional uh, suffering or um, physical suffering. This is because of cause and condition they suffer. For this, when we this realize, it helps us to understand the suffering, uh, real suffering. When we know this, then we have compassion automatically cultivated. So this is important. Then, one thing, we don't know where we come from, where we are going, and uh, then what we are doing right now. Seemingly, we think that we are making money, trying to live the life as we have to live. And in sometimes we confuse why, why I become a daughter. It's so boring. <laughs> why not uh, choose other careers? So we change the career. And also, why I'm in the Elanda? I should go in the, some better, nicer place somewhere in the mountains, in Colorado. And then go there and uh, live there. And then again, the mountain is very boring, cold, and maybe in Miami. So, you know, we don't know. We're wandering, just wandering around and try to find some, some, com some sort of comfort, you know. So Buddha says, relax, boy, relax. This is not actually where you try to find a lasting business, uh, lasting peace, or other way we can say, this is not the solution. Solution is not in day in which you imagine, in which you are hoping, which you are projecting. You have to project inside, where you have a hope, where you have potential, where you have a capacity to understand that. And that's why go to the mountain or go to the solitary retreat and do try to find Inwardly. That's why once you understand the nature of our existence, nothing is appreciable. Maybe it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not nice to uh, understand in, in the Western con context. But it's everything. That, uh, and also, when we say everything is uh, this uh, uh, potential form or uh, in the suffering nature, don't get this uh, upset. We have to also change our way of looking at that. That gives us some different new perspective, how we should expect the things as it is. We are, we, we, most of us, we try to resist and against the mm, nature of, uh, natural sequence of our existence, of our conditions. Our natural condition, until or unless we change the course and condition, a resultant state never going to change. It's going to happen there. <coughs> so mostly what we, we do, either we forget, either we try to avoid or resist. And that resist itself become an issue. It's itself become a problem. You know? That's why it's important. Once we know we are going, coming from there, going somewhere, and over um, duration of our I mean, life is because of this, that, because we know how to do that. That's, that, that's why it's important to know of our, uh, uh, I mean, the, of our evolution and dissolution of our external world and of our individual's life. And then we know the purpose. Many of you know, we don't know why, why we are here, and uh, even we don't know what is the purpose of life. You know, yeah, we just close our eyes and ask ourselves, honestly, what do you think? What is your purpose of life? 
none of us has a clear idea. Maybe we presumably just maybe imitate or maybe copy that maybe life is uh, you know, fun or life is dead, life of this, life purposes like that. But in reality, why do we have not clear idea? Because we don't know how, what is life itself, how it has come to exist, what is going to happen after the end. So this, this, if we don't know, then how can we say that life is, purpose of life is that? You know? So the, also, the, that's why the Lama always says the purpose of life is to become happy. Happiness is the, uh, you know, ultimate insp aspiration of every living being, not human being, living being. Even the dogs, even the small animal insects, you know, we can see. Maybe their mental capacity is uh, not smart like human beings, but they know that they uh, have to seek the happiness. If they're hot, they go to the cooler, cooler place. If it's hot, they come to the uh, hotter place, warmer place. And then human beings, of course, we everything from our childhood to the our end of our last breath, we try to seek the happiness, directly or indirectly. You imagine, we imagine, you know, you just think, until now, what we have not tried to become happy. So that means very clearly it shows that our purpose of life is simply to find the happiness. And unfortunately, beside that, unfortunately, we don't know what is really happiness also. Really, we don't know what is the happiness. That's why we are mistaking, and many of the things that we presuming and we are expecting the happiness, they are the source of suffering, including our food, most delicious food. If you, if you eat this, like say, if we are supposed to consume one, the this is a good example. The best wine, maybe you pay $1,000. If you drink two bottles, three bottles, five bottles, then you will kill. That shows that that substance that we are thinking in our perception, source of happiness, is our source of our death, source of our suffering. That clearly shows that all phenomena has its potentially has a potentially it has a source of suffering. Now, and after that, knowing this, is there any way to something to solve the problem or do we just live with that? No, he says, no, 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 no. These are all that uh, superficial uh, happiness that we are thinking, but reality, they are not uh, uh, happiness. Then the question is how we can find our happiness now. And then happiness is something to do with our sense, not about external things. Especially sentient beings, all happiness is a with a feeling. Whether it is a satisfaction, whether it is a joy, whether it is a comfort, everything is related to the feeling. Now, who is experiencing that feeling? Then we can say, Buddhists say, mind is the one who experiences the pain and the pleasure. He says that. Now we have to, even we may say, I have pain in my leg, I have pain in here. Bones and this blood has nothing to do with the pain and pleasure. These are just, you know, I mean the uh, vehicle which carry the pain and pleasure in the mind, or scientifically say these are the, and the source of just, uh, I mean the transportation, uh, uh, transforming the uh, feeling, I mean the, uh, over contact with the external world, which gives the signal to your brain, and then brain interpret it, to whether it's a pain or uncomfortable or uh, uncomfortable. So, so now, if mind is the one who pain experiences the pain pleasure in any any problem, 
whether it's your physical issue, whether it's your emotional issue, mind is the one who has to take care, nothing else. If your mind is in the crazy mood, even you put all your body with the gold and all diamond, nothing gonna happen for you, you're gonna suffer. So now Buddha said, if your mind is experiencing pain and pleasure, then why not we take care of mind? Why we not learn about mind? So then how mind is functioning all these processes and experiences? Now it's all come from here in the, this uh, 12 interdependent link. Because 12 interdependent link shows our external things and internal inhabitants, evolution and dissolution. Of. So how we come to existence, exist, and how we can dissolve. So this shows the cycle of our existence. Nothing else, cycle from birth, leave, death, and between there's the many process. You know, process like, so I go one by one, roughly, and I cannot finish this everything because we studied this for two or three years for this subject, particular subject. But uh, what I can do is I can share the framework of the, this interdependent link, and uh, then you can read from the sources like internet or book, then you can read and think. And this is the, one of the most profound meditational object that we meditate. And uh, I met this uh, special you know, meditator in the Himalayan mountain in Ramsala. They only meditate on this. If you meditate on this, you can meditate on the emptiness, you meditate on the uh, great compassion, you can meditate on the uh, impermanence, all the Buddhist profound subject can encompass in this topic, you know. So, th like, one important is concept of life after death, of consciousness. It's all, all we're dealing with this. And then second, because to understand this, the cycle of our existence, one has to travel. Something has to travel from past, present, future. Now who is traveling? Physical body is not traveling. Now we say there is a separate one who is traveling. That is the consciousness of mind. So it deals with the mind. One who travels from one life to another life, who experiences everything. Then also it deals with the um, cause and condition. We say the karm karmic causality. Karmic causality deal with the, this deal with the karmic causality because they, this also demonstrated the uh, function of our mind and the actions. So actions also produce result. So it also demonstrate or tell uh, address the importance of karmic system. Karmic system is action and result. Action and result. Action produces a result. A result is experience. Then result experience has a, produce a feeling, feeling uh, uh, produce a discrimination, discrimination between pain and pleasure. You have pain, attachment, pain, you have a hatred and aversion. Uh, if you have a um, uh, pleasant um, feeling, it's attach, uh, it produce attachment and craving. So it also deal with the uh, karmic, Law and cause, and also is deal with the uh, over this one uh, suffering of uh, over six realms. As to understand the suffering of six realm is important. Why? Because uh, we should know the condition. Like we have in Buddhist teaching, we have three. We have three mental scopes, three indi different individuals have a different mentalities. One only wants to know about this life problem and also know about the um, future consequences in the low realms. He don't want to born in hell realm or hungry ghost realm or animal realms. So it's also tell how we born in the animal realm or uh, hungry ghost realm if we are engaging in negative consequences. So. He will only pursue to practice to stop 
the cause and condition of reborn in this unfavorable realms, three lower realms, we call this. Okay. Uh, if you have a long time with this, it's easy to understand. But uh, in new, maybe it does not make sense. Anyway, there is, the theory is like that. And then second, this middle scope, we call middle scope means which has a higher capacity to understand. Okay, I know low realm, uh, they have a suffering, these three realms. Even the human being has a suffering. Human being have uh, eight different sufferings, you know. The eight different sufferings are of a birth. We don't know, we, we forget it. But so many pain, so many pain, so many suffering. And then you know this, how the physical suffering, aging we don't want to see our face wrinkled and ugly when you get older. That is a big suffering, yeah. And then, you know, that's why gradually it change. We don't realize this. If overnight, if it change from our teenage to the uh, 70 years old, in overnight and look at the mirror, we maybe get conscious, faint and shocked. So it's a, it's a gradual process of aging has a tremendous of suffering. And then of also the um, um, parting and meeting. You know, this is a lot of pain for losing someone, just including a relationship. And then, of course, death. Now, when we recollected those and reflected on those suffering, it doesn't mean that we get we discouraged and get miserable. We should know the nature and their function then it's become so familiar to deal with them and it's easy. Actually, it is not so, so big deal. In reality, in reality, if we know reality is functioning in reality, the nature. So for them to understand, the, okay, animal, human being has this suffering, low rims, of course, then goat and demigod has more suffering. This, uh, in, in Western context, God is not same like Buddhist God. Buddhist God is, God means there's other sentient beings who, who have a higher leisure life. And it's, they are not free from um, any suffering, okay? So, means I need to break the bondage of the cyclic existence. Cyclic existence means from born, die, born, die, born, die, in one of these six realms. So, I'm gonna getting suffer all the time until I break the bondage. So he wants to break the bondage and become self-liberated. That is a medium scope. For this also, have to understand this. Without this understanding, he don't know how to break the bondage of this process. Then last, we call this Mayana, or this called the, Mayana means great vehicle. Great vehicle means a, he has a great vehicle is to carry from responsibility of all the suffering of sentient being and liberated them from the suffering and get enlightened. So these are the highest mental scope. So they have to understand everything. Like I, as I mentioned earlier, compassion and wisdom method, which is a true function as I mentioned. One is to purify, one is to cultivate all the good qualities, you know? So, so for this, we have to understand this. So I say three scope is important in terms of to understand, develop the uh, wisdom and method aspect, we have to understand this. And also, generally speaking, if we know how this function in day-to-day -day life, we can, even you don't believe in Buddhism or life after death, this is a practical one that usually if we say ignorance, we know that number one is called the cyclic existent. Link number one is called ignorance. Ignorance, if we have an ignorant, I think it's difficult for us to get what we want. Number one, what we want to do, including, we don't know how to do. So root of, of a, a problem lies in lacking of knowledge. Number one, we call this ignorance, hearsay, lacking of wisdom. So this uh, in interpretation of this 12 interdependent link is also they have uh, 
many ways to present this in different schools in Tibetan and in, the, in Buddhism itself, not in Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, like uh, Pali tradition and Sanskrit tradition. So here, uh, everyone accept this because this is the law of causality and this is how evolution and dissolution of our existence. So uh, this, uh, all the school uh, present this. And uh, it's number one from the trivial interdependent link is ignorance. Ignorance and lack of wisdom, which is the root of all the evils or root of all the afflictive emotions. You know that if Buddhism has uh, 84,000 different afflictive emotions. So their root is ignorance in the spiritual context. And then in our ordinary life, you know, more you are ignorant, more you are become a blind fed and starving of stupidity. More you get educated, more you enlightened, more you know how to solve the problem. That is a logic. And then also we say this like, obscuration, obscuration as to self and person and self. So this in, in Buddhist context also we go beyond. Lacking of knowledge is lacking of wisdom to understand of a self. Why is why we ignorance for uh, it's a root of this? Because we don't know our self existence. We believe in independent self, which is the source of all our problems. In very easy and simple way is you know understand is moment we have discriminated us by someone else, how we get mad. That shows that we are believing in independent existence, self-existent. Like let's say the Tommy, Tom. If I say Tom is a very aggressive person, he's a very bad person. Tom automatically get mad. Why he mad? He believe his self identity as a Tom. Whether he believe is whether he's believe in physical form or his emotional form, but he believe. That's why he believe not only the self uh, self identity. That self identity is independently exist, exist. You know, existence. Let me say exist. For this, then everything for him. It's self consent self-centered, ecocentric. All these are raised based on believing the self-existence. For this, how he, it's, you know, why he have this mentality? Why he has this belief? Because he, number one, he don't know how he exists. He don't know that his existence, self-identity is just dependent, dependent on his physical form and emotional form and his uh, social status and his cultural belief. He, he don't know that it is, it is dependent and not in the de independent existence. So, you know, you, uh, yeah, take a few minutes. You know, you just see, try to remember yourself, whatever your name or name is, just try to Simply observe where I am. You know, this is a, like very uh, profound meditation for finding the self, which we believe it is independent, inter independently exist. You know, we believe sometimes we believe this self, uh, that self exists from its in the physical form. Sometimes we believe it is in the emotional form. Sometimes we believe there is neither of them. Can you say, uh, uh, do you realize this? How, the, how, how, we, how we can believe that it is in the physical form? Why we believe the same identity is in the physical form? I say, uh, I chop the uh, vegetables. I pass the things. Means physically we are representing ourselves. This my hand is 
uh, I do this, I done that. In, when we do the physical action, physical involvement is, um, in physical action is involved, we say that I have done that. So we believe that our physical is our self-identity. So contemplate it, this is important, contemplate it. If a physical, um, our physical form is our self, do you think? You know, we have to ask, this is, a, this is the only meditation in the fine, even realizing the emptiness. Like it first started from the head to toe. Your head is not you. Your face is not you. Your face is you? No, your face is the same, my face. It means mine, is, it belongs, to, this part is belong to you, logically. Psychological, because this is a psychologically established, psychological understanding. And then gradually you will, this will, I mean the, this, uh, we call this um, inferential uh, uh, perceptions, can change into the cognitive, valid cognitive. This have to understand in the cognitively base. Or because we have to learn internally, you know, internal belief system has to be deal with internally. We can nothing uh, post outside. So first, what I do? I go one by one. Okay, I'm not going to detail of this finding stuff. Okay, then what happens? Ignorance stay source. Ignorance produce the actions or actions. Like if you don't know, you go to kill, right? Physical action, verbal action, and then. Uh, um, of course, mental action. This has action produced the, called the uh, formation or karmic formation. Karmic formation, karmic formation, composition of actions. Composition of action, different action. It could be positive action or negative action. This is the second link, okay? This karmic formation. Why ignorance lead to action, action lead to action, uh, ignorance lead to uh, formation of different actions. That action is, could be wholesome or unwholesome, thought, speech, bodily deeds. We produce actions physically, verbally, or mentally. That action formed, and then what happens? Second, that leap imprint of mental consciousness, that produces consciousness. That consciousness is normally the sixth consciousness. You know how, how the action produced? But it's taking this sixth consciousness. Usually, whenever ever actions are dealing, actions are dealing with all the six, six, six sense organs. Your action, a reaction, action produced either from your visual eyes, ears, this, you know, all, all these actions, Ignorance is a consciousness, okay? Ignorance is a consciousness. Consciousness produces the action, karmic formation. Karmic formation happens in all this mind, in consciousness. That consciousness produces in six, this eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness. You know this, when you have smell, you have a two, two feelings, whether it's a pleasant, neural, or unpleasant. So according to that, you have produced action. You may, if you are unpleasant, <gasps> good, you may think, in, in, and then you probably say, it's, wow, something like that. Then your hand you will hold, and it's bad, you reject, you get angry and shout verbally, or physically you maybe throw or something. So the, the, that's consciousness. Conscious, and then consciousness, the, we, we go first we go in the sequence, okay? Then forms the name and the form, mental and physical existence. When the consciousness comes, then um, what happens? When the consciousness is there, now you have ignorance, produce the uh, karma, and then your consciousness is there. Consciousness will, it's a karmic uh, and the seed. This seed consciousness, if one to come into existence, it need the um, 
cause, I mean, condition. That condition is um, craving and clinging. Eight and nine. Craving, craving is attachment. Attachment is a mental factor that increases the desire, but without any satisfaction. That's called attachment. The definition of attachment is mental factor that increases the desire. You check that attachment. You know, it it is a mental factor. It's a consciousness increase the desire. Attachment always increase. Its function is always increase the desire. Desire, but and it's also not only the desire increase the desire, but it's also unsatisfaction. It's just a no limit. That we can clearly see when we want to buy a house, we buy a house, right? After a few years, we know that this is too small, or this that, and this that, and then we want a better one, right? Including house, car, and uh, anything, you know? So that is attachment. Then this attachment developed another, what happens? Clinging, grasping, this ninth. Grasping has an object view of self based bad system of ethic conduct on other bad views. That is because we know that this is the uh, best way to understand is over this relationship. You know, relationship is shows demonstrated over craving and clinging. When we started having a relationship, number one, we attach, exaggerate it in the sense conventionally level, we exaggerate many of our uh, reason to get attached with this or that individuals. You know, I, I always give example. When you first meet two individuals, or you individual, you t started talking, right? Then talking gradually lead to see the physical conditions, physical beauty or physical qualities. Eyes beautiful, face nice, handsome, good looking. And then in, in verbally you communicate skill, you know, the caring, you know, soft spoken and very pleasant wise. These are the objects that we exaggerated. And then started, we having started the relationship then you name them. They have so many other reasons that started clinging again and again and again, and it produced the desire and started clinging. And why this exaggeration? After several years, you start to get boring with those quality that you presuming is great. And then one by one, you see instead of them, them you know, better and better quality, you started seeing them. Oh, I saw that this is beautiful, but now it's nasty. <laughs> and then everything is totally changing, and it's become now become source of your miserable to being that person. That, that shows that we exaggerate in the beginning of, of whatever we believe or whatever we reason giving. If it is not exaggerated, it is a truth. It should be always remain truth, and we see that truth always should be nice. That who the exaggerated? Your mind exaggerated. Your mind projected something that is not. That clearly shows that. You know, if you say one individual has a special quality, so nice eyes. You exaggerated that. How you know? If you ask other individual, what does his eyes look like? Oh, it's very ugly. Very, oh, I don't want to see his eyes. So that shows that your judgment about his eyes is not the, I mean, the, in the not truth. You are exaggerating according to your perception. So what is the now? What is the problem if you exaggerate it? Problem is if, if you exaggerate it, you want to see expecting something great. That greatness has an unlimited desire. Unlimited desire gives you unexpected, no, expectation, great expectation also. That ex expectation never gonna happen. Why? Because number one, there's no truth. The what you have think is no truth. So how can you expect it? Perfection which you have believed and not exist in in reality. Then what happened? You get upset, then you start complaining, 
you didn't realize that it's your expectation and your exaggeration and your perception, then we get upset. Then what happened? It's difficult to let him go because self grasping is so strong. Even we know and we're discriminating, but still inside, the settler clinging is there. You see, you know, when you have uh, this uh, issue and breakups or whatever, the divorce, whatever, still you're thinking, th me thinking not on that person, but on thinking lacking of those needs or those, uh, I mean, those benefit, or uh, should I say benefit, or things that you enjoy or you like or you, they are, you cannot let go because you, your exaggeration, um, fixation, on those level was so strongly ingrained, ingrained in deeply in your mental continuum. So that we repeat it in over, not only in this life, in, according to Buddhists, it's our life after life, life after life, life after life. That's why we has a strong mental imprint inside of our uh, mind. That's why automatically, when we see something. Our attachment activated automatically, and we see all oh, this is great or whatever. The, according to that, our reaction comes. Okay, now what I'm going to this little bit detail. Like uh, now, what is in attachment build craving? Craving build then started forming. Name, uh, name, and this form started forming inside. So this is uh, we are talking about. Uh, existence of a uh, let's say human being human being one let's say consciousness is traveling in the intermittent state you, you know the, the idea is buddhist belief after this life when you die if for death we we say death is defined through separation of physical body and emotion and consciousness when consciousness is no more intact or function with your physical form, you are dead. In Buddhist says, I don't know the clinically what they says, but Buddhist death when your physical body, I mean consciousness, leave the physical body and it's apart from that, and then it started traveling. Moment is get out of your body. It started traveling. That consciousness is not consciousness. is not a physical form. It is a energy, and it's a re nature of the consciousness is luminous and shapeless, formless, and rigpa means it's a, it's a ability to cognize, ability to uh, know, knowing, ability to knowing. So. Whether it's a knowing a conventional or phenomena or automatic phenomena, that is we are not judging right now. It just has a potential to know. It is luminous and it is uh, I mean the capacity to know or cognize the object when it's come into contact. So what happened when you dead? It's just roaming into the uh, intermediate state we call parto. Parto means intermediate state. That intermediate state, after leaving the consciousness from the body, it will be finding the next rebirth in one of those six realms. That's tra it's traveling. So that traveling is, is a force of his travel was not determined by his free will, but is determined by the his karma or his previous action. That why time of our death it's very important to have a positive mind. Positive mind produce the seed of the mm, positive seed, positive karma, and then has a chance to born in the higher realms. Higher realm, higher realm means uh, woman rebirth, demigod rebirth, and uh, god, god rebirth. So it lives, and then Buddhists believe he has a certain duration. He's never wandering all the time. Mini maximum duration is 49 days. 49 days he will go and see, he can, he can go, I mean, he's traveling. And then moment he see some, uh, whatever the, uh, his conscious, I mean, the uh, uh, karmic force, if it's a negative karmic force, he see animal, 
are having, uh, I mean, intercourse or mating, mating of animal. If you're born in a human being, so I will give the example of human being. Human being, when mother or fathers, they're having an intercourse or they're having a relation, physical relationships, what happened? He saw that because of his coming for his relationship with their parents. You know, everybody, he cannot see everybody. Those who have relationship with him, he can see they are having this relationship. Then what happens is attachment and craving started giving a condition for that karmic force which was produced by ignorance. That karmic force, uh, where is that karmic force? That karmic force is on the our consciousness. That consciousness enter into the mother's womb. Enter into the mother's womb. When did he can enter into the mother's womb? Not in all the time. The moment father's sperm and mother's ovary come together, that is the union. We call this union of this uh, white nectar and we call this uh, red nectar and white nectar. Red nectar symbolizes mother's ovary and the white nectar symbolizes the father's sperm. These come into union, then the consciousness enter there. So that is the first time the mother conceived the solid human bomb. If you kill that baby, it's considered that you kill the one, one human being because this is considered as a human being, even if not developed in the full form, like hand or whatever the other organs. So in that time, then what happens? Moment is enter, the craving and the uh, uh, attachment give a condition of this and enter into the mother's womb and uh, moments is enter into the uh, union of this uh, mother and father's uh, ovary and the sperm, what happens? Name and form started. Name and form are, what are the name and forms? Name and form are mental and physical existence. Mental existence is his consciousness. Physical existence is now the seed of this mother's and father's ov uh, um, sperm and ovary. This, this is a physical. You know that after this developed, scientifically it's come into, and then phys other physical forms, your hand, whatever, the, your co eye consciousness, wind, co it's all this, this started to develop there, no? So then what happens after that, Gradually, after nine months, then your eyes, eyes balls started forming, which give rise to the eye consciousness. Ear, you ear, ear drum, whatever the, this is started. Nose, the, the, whatever the function is started. And then all the six consciousness started functioning when these are fully developed. Fully developed, then eye, ear, nose, tongue, touch, and mental faculty are started forming when the baby is about born, especially. They, they call this sixth sense organs are formed at that time. And then what happens, when the, you have six sense organs are formed, then you born, right? You born, inside even your mother's womb, you have a sense of your touch and uh, uh, mental faculty are there. He can feel and sense. And then what happens, after born, his eye, nose, and ears, all this consciousness are started functioning with the help of these organs. And then what happens oh, is contact started. When you have developed bone, the, these organs, organs started contact with the external world or your internal world. When you have the contact with these sense organs, sense organs started functioning. When did sense organs started functioning? when the context started. Without the context, these sense, five sense organs will never function. Like that's why you, if you have, one of your organs is, uh, has no base to uh, form the consciousness, you cannot see. Even your eyes is blind, you can see. Even you have to touch here, you can see. That's why your eyeball helps your eye consciousness to contact the object and then it started functioning. That function, what happens, context started, then it started producing the feeling. When you have sense organ, and it started contact, contact the external world phenomena, then it started producing the sensations, feeling, that is the sensation. So what is the feeling? Now here, contact cause 
want to distinguish an object as a pleasure, uh, pleasurable or painful or neutral. So contact has ability to give a message to the other six organs, whether this is pleasurable or neural or unpleasurable. So this automatically contact produces three feelings, three feelings or sensations. Sensation, what is the sensation? No? Strong desire for more while pain generated and avoid, avoidance desire. You know, like when you have a nice sense of contact, I mean, the object is nice, your sensation is good, nice, and comfortable, and uh, desirable. That produces the attachment and desire. And if it is pleasant, it is unpleasant, what happened? Your reaction or your uh, sensation is you want to avoid. You, you don't want to experience that. So you don't, your desire for not wanting is experience. It does make sense? Okay, so when we say this, what all this teach us, you know, how to react when this happens in our day-to-day -day life feelings. It's not about this is happening, this is happening. I'm not telling you the scientific theory. It is like we are experiencing day-to-day -day life and re according to that, our contact with the external world, what we experience, we experience the pain and pleasures. With this feeling, give us a judgment. Judgment always comes wrong. So that leads us to more pain in our life. So what we are trying to solve? We are trying to solve problems and try to get more comfortable and satisfaction, satisfactory life, right? So for that, we need to know how the sensation and feelings and conduct to produce. When we know, we can accord, re, I mean, react accordingly. We know if, the, if we hit the sun directly or some hit, hit directly, we feel we have a hotness. Instead of complaining, we say, okay, that's uh, I should find a solution. That's how we, we look at it. We never look at the solution, right? Number one, we started complaining and getting miserable. That wastes a lot of our time and energy. So if we, number one, we know this natural, I mean the cause, natural you know, existence and their function, then automatically, instead of complaining, oh no, it's a heat, definitely it's, I mean, it's conducted with the fire, it's the nature, it's a burn, you know, right, burning. Automatically, so why you not to, why you keep complaining with somebody to make that fire? You know that it's burning, nature is burning. Then get out of that and try to distinguish that. That is the solution. So it teaches us to find a solution rather than complaining and get miserable. That is that's why we keep talking. Otherwise, I'm not this, this, I'm not telling the, some theory or scientific theory. This theory is nothing to do with the, uh, finding the solution. You know, so that. Then what happens? Sensation occurring, sensation feeling form. Then what happens? When you have sensation and feelings are there, then you experience the world. That is to becoming the world you experience. Then you say, now I, I can sense, I can feel this, I can feel that, this. Then it's become be becoming. Becoming, then after becoming, is that's your birth. When you are born, you how you can distinguish whether you are complete human form. Human form is the sense person who have a sense to experience the human experiences. Then we say this is you are a human being. Sometimes we say we interpreted funny things. Or you you may not be human because you are telling this and that. You know, so it it shows that our becoming is when we have sense. So sense is when we have sense. Mostly when we are born, and then we, our sense organs are functioning, that is becoming. And then becoming, now over duration for after the birth, or rebirth, we can say rebirth, because you are born again, right? So born again, rebirth. So in Buddhist context, every one of us are reincarnations. Not me alone. Not the Tukus, not Dalai Lama. We, every one of us, are reincarnation. Maybe reincarnation of holy man. But it's not a big deal. 
It's just a continuation of our mental consciousness reborn again and again. So the over rebirth, what happens? Process of so here, process of becoming existence, period lasting from time of fully potentialized karma up to the beginning of next lifetime. Now this becoming is becoming in sense means it's like blooming. It's not the, the idea. Since from your mother's conceiving your mother's baby, you are experiencing the pain and pleasure. And then until you leave your physical body because your sense organs are functioning because of this uh, uh, other sense, help of this, then you are experiencing. That experiencing is, if you are born in the human, you are experiencing the human pain and pleasure. If you are in the animal, you experience the animal pain and pleasure. If you are male, you experience the male, in female, you are female. Of course, it's uh, generally the same, but uh, according to the, the conventional world, we have a different level of experiencing, you know, like that. Then what happens after the forming, aging, the, this is the 12th ring, aging and death. Aging and death is important in one reason, aging, we don't need to worry about this. If we know the uh, natural uh, process, we get upset when we see or feel or experience the visible changes in our physical form and mental consciousness. There. Aging is not in the physical form. Of course, the consciousness is not aging in terms of philosophical context. It says there is no change in the, in the, in the settled consciousness. It's just momentary uh, uh, energy. But what happened due to the physical degeneration of physical aging, we can experience the mental aging also. Mental aging like we maybe have a shortage of memory, we can remember clearly. This is not because of our um, consciousness is getting old. Maybe the, in some other context say we may say your soul is old. In, in, in Buddhist say it's not old. It's going to the beginning again. It's young again, maybe. And then here the aging because of a physical degeneration, physical, uh, I mean, the weakness due to aging, then uh, over mental consciousness also s started because mental consciousness hugely depend on the physical body. So now here, what is aging and Aging actually, aging started the moment we started born. But we realized that later on when we have 70, 80, now I am old, something like that. In, in Tibetan, when we reach uh, 40s, we say now old, because our lifespan is also short, you know. So, but somehow, aging started. That, that's why if we see the reality, we have nothing to worry about aging, nothing to experience. Uh, suffering about our aging. Aging started and death also started the moment we born. Our birth itself is the cause of our death and aging. It does make sense? If we're not born first moment, how we can die? So every moment we are dying. We are dying every moment. One thing we clearly understand is Right now, most of us like above 30, and if we ask, where is the John or Gala who is a 12 years old boy, 10 years old boy, 15 years old boy, we will never find. They already died. They're gone, they're gone. So it means every moment, death is there. The only the uh, death we, uh, I mean, the, conventionally we death, particularly when we say over time of uh, living consciousness in the body. And uh, the process of this dying is not so scary one, uh, once if we know. The one thing that we have to understand is the death process is uh, nothing scary than just sleeping. 
Why? That process is nothing, it is just like movements of consciousness, growth from a consciousness is dissolving one by one, and then it's, it's, it's in a settler consciousness, one who traveled from this life to next life, that was just remain there. And it's just leave the body. So now you, you say, what is, uh, what is, and then if that process was scary, we should also scary, scare of, the, of a sleeping. Sleeping pattern is the same like a dying process. The only thing that we, why we worry mostly, we don't know what is happening in the next, after we leave this, we don't know. We are losing everything. That was the one fear from my understanding. And then spiritual point of view, those who have an idea about like people like me, we know that uh, we have done so many negative actions and negative uh, um, uh, physically, verbally, we have accumulated many negative actions. We know also that the consequences of negative actions. So in the Buddhist we say, Chova Rap, as means a good practitioner, always excited to die. <laughs> and, and, the, uh, and then middle ones, happy. And those, at least even is, uh, you know, like fairly good, at least they are not scared of dying. So if you are in that category, you consider to be a good, I mean, I mean the spiritual practitioner. If you are not in these three, <laughs> very bad. <laughs> So if I check myself, I'm not in this tree. I know the consequences, and I'm scared. I know that. <laughs> so my scale is not for dying, but of next life. Scale of next life. If i born in the animal life. Now, how can I free myself from animal? And it, like, you know, you maybe know, in this, I never saw in America that animals are used for this farming. In India, this ox and bulls, they used for, you know, uh, farming. Oh, they, they lash them and put this, what do you call this? Yeah. York on there and they ox, there's a saw in there, even saws, uh, you know, scratching. And it's, you know, there's no freedom. Sometimes they're so tired, just they fall down and still they're beating, beating. So why I'm saying this? Because I don't want to born that way. And in worst cases, I have no awareness to cultivate my compassion and my, uh, to, to develop the idea of emptiness in that state. Because my form is so, in the, I mean, the, in the animal form. So my consciousness, even it's the consciousness of the uh, um, in a past uh, reincarnation of the past human life, but because the form, I have a less capacity and maybe very little capacity to think and free myself. Even if I have pain, in you know, old hungry, thirsty, I have no, no freedom. Then I, maybe I, if I born in the, one of the drug in America, then I will be very lucky, you know, <laughs> very lucky. And luckier than a, a human being in a, in a third world country, yeah. So uh, what I'm basically saying is like most important for going all this through this, now I will wonder to, a little bit under to how we can apply that in daily life. When you know that these functions are not just uh, belief systems, these are just happening in our daily life. And this, this also we know that these are our negative actions produce as an unpleasant result. Whether you believe in life after death or not, your present action, whether it's a verbal action or physical action or mental action, brings you definitely pain. So what is your remedy? Your remedy, spiritual is nothing just, you know, it is to just stay like this and forget everything and, you know, to just close your eyes. It's not a spiritual way to, I mean, especially integrating the Buddhist concept of being a spiritual. You know, moment, even you are making, cook, I mean, the, making the morning copy. You know that all this is happening in your copy. If your ignorance of 
the volume, how much you have to put, how much you add the sugar, volume of your heat, everything, coffee will, coffee will not nice. So this can you integrate it, you know, in a one day life, as Dalam always say, I have to be more positive and constructive mental attitude. When you have a mentally healthy, physical and verbal action be always good. You know, this if you didn't careful or apply in daily life, you know, sometimes absent-mindedly unnecessary emotions are giving rising. You know, I was like so upset when one time I was few few weeks ago I'm traveling to all in the morning. I thought it should be okay after being there around the, like one hour before. Then I realized that it's a Sunday and a lot of traffic and so many people. And uh, my flight is getting late. And I was in the security checkup so line. It's taking me hours to get out. And then the moment I stayed there, oh, so many emotions are coming. I started complaining my in front of people that they are not moving fast. And I started getting angry with the uh, you know, this Thai official who's checking this, uh, you know, passport and the to bring ticket. They are so slow, and you know, sometimes they doing very slowly, purposely. Like, I feel like that. They didn't get angry with him, you know. Then I'm angry with those people who scanning everything. They uh, then sometimes <laughs> coming up, then again, again. Why he's doing this? No, why not this? No, I'm getting angry. Really, get upset. Then you know, so many emotions are started rising. And then I look at in front of my uh, person, and she's a very calm lady. Maybe she's not late, <laughs> late for her flight, but very calm, you know. Then I realize how poor I am as a being a spiritual person, having this kind of emotion. I'm started blaming this all this. Oh, I have to change my you know perception. Number one, I'm thinking as myself a very important because I have to be exactly on what I want to have to do. I have to be there. That started then creating, then even I creating my friend who is taking me to the airport. Why he, you know, driving so slow? He should be you know, drive fast, faster. So I could be here a little bit earlier, you know. So, you know, these emotions are unnecessarily coming out. I, what I'm trying to say when I exp share this experience, in daily life, any consequences, when we have happy in our money and a good job, we don't seem like don't care about the spiritual things in the sense and the spiritual in terms of taking care of our heart. I'm not saying believing in a particular uh, belief system. I'm saying we don't care much about meditation. Meditation maybe for Tibetan monks. We feel like that. And I'm a housewife, I have a good job, I have money. Why should I care about that? Care is the Buddhism emphasizes preparation for future and preparation for future consequences because you have to be healthy mind. If you're healthy mind, your mind are informed, transformed, then if future consequences arise, you are ready to fight, or you are ready to change, or you already change and don't care about it, those effects. This will not affect you immediately. So you know, then we realize how I'm a weak. So that's what I'm trying to say here. It is even we share so much information like this, and you may absorb some of this information. Then you leave it that you will never benefit a single penny from this kind of information. So now, what is, how you can benefit is applying these theory related to your day-to-day -day life experiences. How it's like feelings, uh, um, sensation, and context are related with you. Your contact, interaction with your society, interaction with your community, interaction with your family, interaction with your children, interaction with your uh, wife, husband, they have so many opportunity for us to grow this into the actual realization of our own miserable circumstances and can I hope, I mean, the opportunity to transform them. Like if you are really, like, I mean, the short temper or very, I mean, the irritating person for even the small things, moment you realize this, this is not unhealthy for you and your community or your family, gradually you change. Change is 
nothing, just making the habit in your mental attitude. That is only how we transform our negative emotion to positive emotion. You cannot say, hey, this anger, I, I can throw this. This is not the way we do. Dealing means to transform means you cannot transcend it in the supernatural way. You can transcend by training your mind, making familiar with so unhealthy thoughts to the healthy thoughts. That is a really super, super, I mean the spiritual practice, truly spiritual practice in Buddhism. You don't need to wear the monk's clothes or bell the ring and do this. This is nothing. Even you bell ring and calling Buddha's name all your lifetime, if you're not changed, it's nothing. You know? So what I'm trying to emphasize, so I have only one minute, emphasizes as I'm related this, try to relate this in your life. That is a Searching, inner searching, we call this Buddhist, to search yourself, liberations, searching within you. Because everything was out of mind, creation of mind, creation of your perceptions. Perceptions should be changed, unhealthy thoughts, perceptions should be changed because they bring the suffering. So that's how you apply this. Okay, so thank you for your attention and your time and then I pray and uh, request and encourage all of us to at least take some time in our life because time never wait. We are not too old to do, we are not too early to do. Everything is possible. So put these things in practice and then maybe our life can gradually change. Thank you very much, good night.